And now, your hosts, Mike Jarek and Juliette Huddy. Here, and I'm sure you've been following this. It sounds like a horror movie. Innocent families terrorized in their own homes by a group of anonymous hackers. Yeah, this is an incredible story. Imagine somebody hearing everything that you say, seeing everything that you do, and using that information to threaten your children's lives. For three families in Washington State, this is no movie. It is mm -hmm. a campaign of technological terror they say is so real. Joining us to share their stories, sisters Darcy Price and Heather Kuykendall. Uh, it is good to have both of you here. Also with us, CEO of IDTheftSecurity.com, Robert Chiliano. And Robert, good to see you again. I know you were on just a couple of days ago. Uh, we need some information out of you, but first, yeah. the story. Give us some, um, Courtney, and you also have two other children, right? right. What are their ages? Ten, well, Katie's ten, and then Connor's nine. And Courtney mm -hmm. is sixteen. She's sixteen. Just, uh, how did it start? Well, it seemed to start with her cell phone, um, and it spread almost as a virus. Mm -hmm. It sent out text messages to about 25 contacts in her phone. Um, the very same message is going to spread out over 25, exactly. 30 people. Exactly. It spread out to about 25 people. Um, and then from there, it just went crazy. Um, she noticed her phone doing weird things, so she powered it down, and they powered it back on mm -hmm. uh, by itself. Hard to believe. I hardly believed it myself mm -hmm. until the next day. Um, my cell phone and my husband's was charging on our kitchen counter, um, and they were we we started getting phone calls too, restricted mm -hmm. phone calls. Um, like somebody else was in total control of this yeah, phone. Total control of, your of the phone. And so we powered it off, and then our phones. I watched them power back on. Okay. If I hadn't seen it from my own eyes, yeah. I. Maybe we should listen to one of the um, sound bites so you guys get a feel for exactly what these folks are hearing when they answer their cell phone. Get the f out. We will kill people at Curtis when you least expect. All your stupid f friends. And Curtis is the school, yeah. right? Is that That's where Heather school. goes? That's where Courtney goes. I mean, Courtney. Goes. Yeah. <laughs> where Heather Courtney goes. Um, when it got most scary for me, if I was in your family, is when it seemed like they're not only hacking into your, your conversations, they can see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the night you were all watching American Idol, like most families do in right. this country. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were sitting in our living room, and my husband ha was on his cell phone, and so the camera phone would have been facing the couch right. that I was sitting at with my two young children. My son was eating top ramen covered in a blanket. The noodles. Yeah. yeah. And um, they described the blanket my son was covered in. They said they wanted a bite of his top ramen, and they they said what? Um, See, it, it scare the heck out of you. They said the color of my daughter, my ten-year-old daughter's shirt, and it, they even said what it said, like a Roxy shirt, and told my husband to stop writing on the yellow legal pad. Mm. We knew it was terrible before this, but she called me that night. She, she was bawling. She said, I, "I'm losing it." That's when I, I just can about see me now. Too. So yeah. clearly, somebody's watching. Mm -hmm. Somebody knows where you guys are. They know the colors of your cars. They know when you get out of them. Uh, and I know that you had a recent incident, Heather. Mm -hmm. at, at, you know, you thought it had sort of calmed down for a little bit. Right. And just when you're trying to take a breath, it happened again. We've tried. We've changed our phones, got new numbers. You know, it doesn't just happen at home because I think mm -hmm. people think we have surveillance cameras or something in our home, a bug. My daughter was babysitting and they called and they knew the name of the little girl she was babysitting. They said her name. She mm -hmm. was at a local private club. Mm -hmm. um, so she's not and at your house. Named, oh, she wasn't even at my house. They named the club she was at. They described um, a car in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And when she looked up in the parking lot that she could see from the playground, she saw the orange Jeep that they described. But Darcy, it seems like somebody's following her around, though. Mm -hmm. it, it, is there technology? Because you mentioned that the, the, your camera phone may have come on, and that do you think that that's how they're seeing what's be, going on? It could be. The first night it started happening, we were at a Bible study with the girls, and they would talk to the phone and say, wow, this is freaky. If you can hear me, really, the, my phone number is this and that, and please call me at 804. And that phone would ring at 804. So we knew they could hear through the phone. And they did that numerous times to the different But girls. I didn't think that technology existed. Well, I, I didn't, didn't know either. that your I had no the, idea. The camera phone would come I... on and show the room. Robert, does that exist? Know. The technology certainly does exist uh, that um, uh, could monitor your activities via your cellular phone. Absolutely. Uh, with global positioning and wireless cameras in the actual phones themselves, yes, it does exist. The likelihood that this is actually what's, a, what's occurring, though, is, is slim. 
Uh, see, it would take uh, a, a, somebody very sophisticated with direct access to those phones for all this to take place. So more than likely, like you said, somebody is paying unwanted attention to them and is actually following them. And by, that way, they're actually thereby getting all that data on the car in the parking lot, who they're with, and so because on. Because you can buy scanners, I mean, like Radio Shack, to listen in on cell phone conversations. It's not a cell phone. It's more of a scanner. There okay. are devices that you can actually use to monitor uh, wireless wireless radio waves right. to intercept those communications. Even cheap walkie-talkies, the little play ones, you can listen through people's they, They've walls. done other things, though. Explain how when her phone is in the seat pocket in front of her at the suburban, in the suburban, we're going to Sprint store to get new phones, new numbers, right. everything. My, my niece's phone called two people. It rang out on speakerphone, called one person, and it, then Never called another person. Even touching we were, the phone. I saw it, and, and people might say you're crazy, but I, we're telling the truth, and people can choose to and, believe it or not. And we should point out, as you were just starting to, that, you know, because people say, well, get rid of your phones, don't use a phone, change take the, the batteries service. out of your phone, change the service. Yeah. You guys have changed your number how many times, Heather? Three times. Three times. And, and have you and tried getting phones. rid of your cell phones, just not touching them for days on end? We got rid of the phones. We actually turned them over to the police. This is another message they got uh, about killing your pets. Listen to this. Don't me shooting at and today. What are the odds, though? I mean, Courtney, 16, you know how people in high school play, play around. This is nasty playing around, though. It's not that. We knew from day one it wasn't. We knew. How do you know? Because they can hear us through the microphone on the on the yeah, on the cell phone for sure. Absolutely, they, they they've repeated things. We were outside. Now. That's my I can plumpy and my parents. They're seventy. Those are their right. animals, and they threaten to know where they live and kill my parents' animals. My dad's in front of the Tacoma police station talking into his phone. Yeah, that looks crazy, but he said, "If you can hear us, you big toad, we're uh, we're after you now." And the police are on it. FBI is on it. Homeland Security. They called back a minute later and said, "Yeah, we can hear you, you big toad." Oh I mean, so God. I have seen things with my own eyes that other people might say are questionable, but I have seen it. Yeah, and you so mentioned your dad there. We had a, a picture up. It, 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 what does he think about he, this? He's, he's 70 afraid, years he's old. Does he even to understand? Lose all of us in a. Snap. And you guys, this is very hard for you, and I know that uh, you feel like people aren't taking this seriously to a certain extent. Uh, how nervous are you about your kids' lives? I mean, you know, we see school shootings in this mm -hmm. country that happen far more than any of us want yeah. them to happen. That's why we and, shouldn't ignore yeah. them. And it, it seems very serious to me. Robert, you know, why, why are people not sort of trailing this family all the time and worried that something serious is going to happen here. Well, stalking is something that occurs every single day in this country, every single day in this world. Uh, studies show that 50% uh, of all people suffer some form of mental illness. I mean, think about everybody that you know. Half of them are crazy, right? <laughs> so, with that said, there's a lot of people out there that are paying unwanted attention to others in the form of stalking. And situations like this that happen, you have to mitigate it by obviously what you're doing, staying in touch with law enforcement, Okay, and having some form of a paper trail, documenting everything that happens, paying attention to your surroundings at all times, mm -hmm. taking self-defense classes. I mean, really empowering yourself. Yeah, but uh, it has to be frustrating, especially yes. Darcy. That, that people, a lot of people are saying, "Well, come on, mm -hmm. you, you fix this on your own." Right. Uh, that you know, a lot of people are saying, "Don't they don't believe you?" Yeah, there's going to be skeptics. We'll just tell the truth and let them choose for themselves. We've seen it, so um, we just hope someone can figure it out because it's. Everyone yeah. carries a cell phone, and so we feel like we, they need to be safe. Yeah, Sprint says this technology, well, I'll show you what we contacted them, and mm -hmm. they uh, issued a statement here. We'll put it up on the screen, Sarah, put it up. Go ahead. We, we are unaware of any technology that would allow the activity portrayed in this story to occur, and Sprint continues to fully cooperate with the law enforcement agencies involving this ongoing investigation. Now, I know you guys have been trying to get Sprint to help you to try to figure out who is making these phone calls and how this is happening. Uh, and I've also spoken to detectives who say that, that there's no way for the camera to see them. Is, is that your understanding, Robert, or do you believe that that camera I've never could be? i heard of that. I, you know, there are possibilities if you were to actually plant the virus in the firmware of the phone, which is a form of software. If she's visiting MySpace sites and somebody's targeting her uh, via her phone, via the MySpace site, there could be a virus there. But it's, it's not likely. If there's somebody in the neighborhood that actually has a telescope and they're paying attention, they can get all that same data as well. Heather and Darcy, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And Robert, always a pleasure. Thank you, Robert.